Right, okay then ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. Um, and today we're going to be looking at this PlayStation 4. This PlayStation 4 has an issue with its fan. So if we um, just take a look at this, we try and power the machine on. You can hear the, pan, the fan start to spin and then it stops. And again there. And again there. We can see we do have a picture. Okay, so we're just going to power that off now, so as not to do any damage. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do with this PlayStation is we are going to install a new fan module uh, and we are going to replace this and uh, hopefully once we've replaced that um, our PlayStation will live again so bear with me guys and I will see you in a sec right okay then in order to uh, remove a fan unit from a PlayStation 4 it's really quite simple we need to disassemble the unit so first of all turn the console around and what you'll have is you will have two right, um, little black plastic covers over this, over these two screw ports held in with some double-sided tape. Peel those off. Those are already missing in our instance. Same with the warranty stickers here and here. Again, in this instance, those are missing. And then you take your T9, security torx bit. all those come out just there like that then you get your fingers behind this bottom lip and pull out and just pull up and that releases the rear slide forward and that removes the bottom half of the machine you then have and the screw's missing and left out and centre out of this one. Um, there's two screws on spring retainers here and three more T9s here, here and here. Those are missing in this case. So we're just going to pretend we unscrewed them. Uh, there are two plastic tabs here and here. Get hold of those. And lift it up on this side where the power connector sits. And then just get hold of it in the middle. And walk it up eventually you should get to the point where the thing pops free without you having to shred your fingers disconnect that little ribbon put your power supply to one side next I don't think there's any bloody screws in this thing um, there should be four screws one under this ribbon here one here one here and one here and also a smaller little Phillips screwdriver there remove those at the same time you want to disconnect this optical ribbon that is a case of getting hold of it depressing the little metal clip there on the back of its connector and it just clips out remove the Wi-Fi antenna it's just a BNC connector down there pop it unhook it from its retainers unclip the signal cable for the BD drive, which is a bit awkward doing it when it's stood up. Okay, once you've done that, your optical drive comes free. Nice. Okay, now then, on the CUH1116As, you will get a little uh, Phillips screw there. Remove that. On the 1003A's you don't. 
So once you've done that, back to upside, slide the hard drive cover by just grasping and with a bit of pressure from the back of your palm, slide it that way. It just clips free, remove it from the front, slide it, and away that comes. Hard drive, you normally have a Philips PlayStation uh, logo screw there. Unscrew that, slide that out. You would then have, um, and somebody has put one screw back in here at least, but they've put it in the wrong bloody hole. There's also a T9 screw there, remove those, once you've removed those, get hold of the front edge and pull, and that will disconnect that side. Same on this side, slide it back and away, and there you go. Now what you should have here now are a set of screws, again T9s, there, 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 and there. Now in this case, somebody has put the wrong screw back in the wrong place, and only one of them. Oh no, there are a couple of them, I do beg your pardon. There ain't many of them though. Disconnect the fan cable, just pulls up and away. And then there are two Phillips screws which hold in the bracket for the CPU heatsink. And I am trying to find my screwdriver and for the life in me, and oh, there we go, I'm sat on it. I do have a nice big shiny one somewhere, which is better suited to this size screw. Can't find it though, which I've just had it as well, so that makes it even more annoying that I've lost it. So no marks out of 10 for me for preparation. Anyway, that is those away. Pop the screws back in there because we don't want to lose any more of them than what somebody already has out of this thing. We can then lift this shield up. Funnily enough, the shield is actually stuck to the motherboard. There we go. And now your motherboard simply lifts up. Ports are in the back there, so just slide it out and away. And there we are. So now we're down to the uh, the main board. Sorry, the um, the main chassis. There's a couple of screws we need to remove to get access to the fan. It does all look a bit burnt and a bit nasty. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there are a couple of screws in here. Um, to be honest, uh, I think there are usually a couple more here. There's one here, one here, one here. Which, for some reason, these two have gone walkies. And then this metal plate just literally lifts out with the heatsink on the back. And then your fan is another couple of screws. Yeah, I really don't look too pretty, this fan. It usually has a metal retaining clip that sits in there. This one is missing, which makes me highly suspicious that somebody has been buggering about in this machine before. Anyway, in true Haynes manual fashion, refit is the reverse of a removal. So that metal clip literally just sits back over that lip there, which is where the front USBs go. Fan locates over these two dowels. Plastic rods there, and then basically all we do is we refit in the same manner as we disassembled. So there are a couple of plastic rods on the back you need to be aware of. 
make sure they locate just here and here okay that's done we're just going to test this for now so we are going to give it a a good clean but uh, not before time of course don't forget to put your screws back in to secure your fan because of course somebody has already been in here and completely forgotten about that there we go let's do that again so yeah somebody um, really wasn't particularly diligent when they've been in here before, I suspect somebody has already attempted to remove this fan. And probably attempted to replace it already. But not being one to trust anybody else's work, apart from my own. So we're going to give this a good clean down when we're finished and we're going to replace all the thermal paste and everything else and make it really rather nice and shiny again. But there's no point in doing that until we know we have a console that at least in essence of hardware is working okay because frankly this machine is not going to last two minutes without a fan that actually works properly so Let's get my screwdriver. Just going to tighten the screws down a little bit. Okay, so just to test this machine, I aren't going to put everything back together. I'm going to do, I'm going to put the power supply back in. I'm going to put the hard drive back in. Essentially that's all you need to fire this up and test. And get some HDMI. I'm going to plug that in. Okay, and that's Essentially, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do that. Let's fire it up. See what we get. You can hear now. Our fan sounds nice. Spinning away happily. Let's look at the state of that. All nice and some burn marks around there <laughs> it actually should spin and this one as you can see well doesn't particularly well so anyway we've got a white light we've got a fan and we have output to display so all we need to do now is take it apart, replace the thermal paste because that's probably been sodomized by the fact that the fan hasn't been spinning. Um, we will strip it and we will clean all the dust and horrible bits and pieces out of this. Um, and we'll also get hold of a spare set of screws from one of my scrap machines and we will replace those as well. Because frankly, I ain't sending any consoles out to anybody when there's only a couple of screws left in there. So. Anyway, that's that. Nice, easy, quick fix. If you have a PlayStation with a fan issue, then the best thing to do, to be honest, is just replace it, because nine times out of ten, that's going to fix it. So, um, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen, and I will see you on the next vid. Uh, so, TTFN, and uh, have a good one.